Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. If you followed my channel at all, you'll know that my first Leonardo Officina Italiana fountain pen, my Momento Zero Blue Hawaii, is one of my favorite fountain pens in my collection. The pen that makes the opening inquiring minds scrawl is my Leo MZ Blue Hawaii. This pen spawned a small collection of Leonardo fountain pens, two Momento Zeros, two Ferrores, one Momento Zero Grande, and a Ferrore Grande. I've seen Leonardo come up with new models over the last couple of years, but nothing has come close to replacing my Momento Zero as my favorite model of them all. Then Leonardo came out with the Magico. From afar, it looks like a Momento Zero that has been converted into a piston filler with an ink window. Color me intrigued. I wasn't that interested in the initial finish options until I saw it was available in Emerald or Smaraldo in Italian. And they aren't that much more expensive than a regular Momento Zero. So I bit the bullet and I ordered one with a bottle of Leonardo Turquoise and an extra nib in the flexible steel nib Leonardo calls Elastic. With supply chain issues holding up the order for months, it's finally here. Find out if this Momento Magico has replaced the Momento Zero at the top of my Leonardo list right now. I've often thought that the Leonardo Momento Zero and the Leonardo Ferrore are the perfect writing instruments. Style for my hand, size, the sections are almost identical in that milk bottle shape, hourglass shape I suppose, but it just fits my hand so beautifully. And of course the Ferrore I think is underestimated in terms of its value. It's certainly a bargain. And this one in Galaxy is just gorgeous. Look at that. The Momento Zero Blue Hawaii was my first Leonardo. And even though I've got a beautiful Momento Zero Grande in this Jonathan Brooks and a Ferrari Grande in this beautiful Smaraldo. Look at that. I still think that the Memento Zero shape itself is probably the best for my hand of all the Leonardos. And I have two Memento Zeros and two uh, Ferrore style fountain pens now from Leonardo and they're all magnificent. But I think that the Leonardo is probably the best. And so when the Leonardo Magico came out, it's a slightly different style than the um, Leonardo Momento Zero. Uh, but the one thing that the Momento Zero doesn't have is a piston filler. You have to get the grande size to get the piston. Well now with the Magico you have a piston. So I thought okay even though they've changed the section the pen is roughly the same size as a Momento Zero I think. And so I ordered one and I waited a few months for it to come in and it's finally come in from Applebaum. I've taken all the stuffing out of this, but uh, this is the Applebaum green box. And of course you get your couple of Stroop waffles, which is always nice. I ordered a bottle of Leonardo Turquoise ink, what they call Turquoise. Turquoise? Turquoise? I'm not sure. I am Italian. Sono Italiano in spirito, ma ho esposato una donna che preferisce lavorare nel giardino a far l'amore appassionato un spallo grande. Hawaii. I'm going to be interested to see that because I think, I think it's going to match this Leonardo Momento Magico. So, again, always beautifully packaged from Applebaum. Always appreciate that. So let's open it up. different kind of box from the Momento Magico than I'm used to with this interesting design. Fatto a mano nelle affacina Leonardo, made by hand in the workshop of Leonardo. Non saranno naturalmente accolti sotto la mia protezione per la durata del loro soggiorno. 
Grazie. Stirografica la volta da bella piena. I don't know whether I'm saying that right. Pistone. That's the cool feature about this pen. Finestra transparent. Transparente. Finestra. Finestra transparate. Finestra trans. Finestra transparente. But it's such an ugly language. I don't know whether I'm saying that right or not. I don't know what it means. Cento per cento italiano. 100% Italian. I know people quibble about that because the nibs aren't made in Italy. But let's see if we can get this open. It does not want to budge, so I had to open up the flap. <clears throat> I had to pull that out. There we go. We have the black on black. Leonardo Officina Italiana. And there will be an inner box here as well. Lots of sleeves. And we open it up. And there be the pen. And we have the booklet. And some documentation about the pen and the filling system. And there we have some family photos. Salvatore's father, Ciro. Ah. It is a flex nib, what they call the elastic nib, which I bought extra. I am no calligrapher, but I thought you'd be interested to see how that nib works. And here's the pen. Isn't that gorgeous? So that is the same material as this. So this is the Leonardo Momento Magico piston filler and I can't wait to ink this up and give it a try. And what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. After the writing sample please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. I would be remiss if I didn't mention that Momento Magico is Italian for that magic moment. This magic moment So different and so new But like any other Until I kissed you There, now that's out of my system to the pen itself. Overall, it is shaped similarly to the Momento Zero with the same conic finials, but the Magico is slightly thinner and slightly longer as well than the Momento Zero. So from afar they look similar, but the Momento Magico is a completely different shape altogether. So my wish is still that Leonardo will make a Momento Zero in a piston filler someday. Maybe a vacuum filler or even a bulk filler. Well, a guy can dream. Oh, what a terrible dream. But we do see Leonardo's magnificent Smeraldo acrylic resin here. I know the camera makes this look a lot bluer than it is. This is more green than blue. And here it is again on my fantastic, gorgeous, Ferraro Grande Smeraldo. It's the same resin. Look at that, folks. Isn't that amazing? So we have to spend a moment just to admire this amazing acrylic resin called Smeraldo. A little slow motion action always makes things look a little sexier. What's it about? <laughs> Lifeguards? <laughs> wow, look at them run. <laughs> they do that a lot. Overall, it is similar to the Momento Zero with the conic finials, but the body and the cap are thinner and the whole pen is about three eighths of an inch longer. So from the top, we see the aforementioned conic finial, and the cap curves up to the rhodium-plated Magico 
cap band in these cool cutout chevrons and then the two step down to the barrel that Leonardo has been putting on some models like my Momento Zero Grande Jonathan Brooks. This little two-stepped thing happening uh, from the cap that sort of blends that shape down to the barrel. I like it. I like it a lot. The rhodium clip extends out from the cap and is the roller clip that we've become used to uh, with Leonardo and it's very springy and very usable. The barrel curves up slightly before tapering down to another rhodium plated ring that separates the piston knob from the barrel and that curve of the barrel continues down over the piston knob to the end conical finial. The cap unscrews with one turn to reveal the Magico's large clear ink window framed with two rhodium rings and then the tapering section that has a small flare towards the number six size Yovo steel nib and the black plastic feed. Mr. Matrone really loves his pen finishes, whether they are acrylics like these incredible resins or the special celluloids and ebonites. And you can tell that by how he treats the material rod. Look at this. You see this? You see that bright stripe right there and then the dark band and then the bright band? How it goes completely through the entire pen from section to end finial. That means that he's using a single rod stock that is cut here, 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 and there. So they didn't just put them back together willy-nilly. They took care to line them back up the way they were in the solid rod. Now the cap itself uh, can't be lined up, but it's from the same piece. You can tell it's from the same piece. And that's attention to detail right there, folks. Beautiful. When the Magico came out in 2021, a sliver of that ink window was visible when you capped the pen, and the window wasn't framed by these metal rings. I'm pleased with the design alteration as it shows that Matroni has continued to refine his designs. Now let's take a closer look at this nib. It's the standard number six size Yovo nib that Leonardo has been using since January 2021. As you saw in the unboxing, I ordered one of the Leonardo uh, steel elastic nibs uh, to try it out. And I'm going to put that nib through its paces and compare it to the Mont Blanc calligraphy nib that I borrowed from Jack Hernandez. So stay tuned for that video. The nib has the newer Yovo swooping curve rather than the older scroll work and the laser etched Leonardo wings logo, Leonardo and Italy and an M for medium stamped into the side. The nib and the feed are part of a nib assembly that unscrews for replacement or maintenance. And the inside of the cap shows a step milled into the inside uh, that meets up with the section to seal the nib against evaporation. The cap posts deeply and securely, but not nearly as nicely balanced as the Momento Zero. You can see that posted, the Magico is a good 3 eighths of an inch longer than the Momento Zero and becomes a fairly long baton in the hand. Unposted, the pen is plenty long enough to write with comfortably. The section is a bit of a disappointment to me personally because it just doesn't feel as comfortable as the two-step Momento Zero design. I guess I'm spoiled with this two-step design because it's just perfect for my hand and grip. The flare at the end of the section is nice, but the combination of the tapering barrel shaped section and the rather straight design of the barrel itself has left the pen feeling less comfortable in my hand than my Momento Zero. The Momento Zero has a bit of a bulge right in here and a bit thicker, and so it sort of cradles in my hand and that two-step section just fits there perfectly. Whereas the Magico uh, is a bit straighter and a little bit longer and my thumb rests on those threads which are slightly sharper on the Magico than on the Momento Zero. There's a good view of the two sections together. I bought this pen from Applebaum where it's currently selling for $167.32 US and you have 14 nib options from which to choose. Uh, extra fine, fine, medium, broad, 1.1 stub, 
and extra fine and fine elastic nibs and steel in the same range in 14 karat gold. The gold nibs are an upcharge more than the price of the pen itself. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Leonardo Momento Magico with a Leonardo Momento Zero Blue Hawaii, a Pelican M800, a Hongdian N7, and the new Narwhal Schoolkill Dragonette Sapphire. And I failed to mention when I was uh, looking at the cap and the barrel that the Magico has Leonardo and the number of the pen. It's not a limited edition, but it is a numbered edition, etched onto the back of the cap, whereas the Momento Zero has those etchings along the barrel. So that's another change. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. The Pelican M800 is the reigning champ for posting, and the Hongdian N7 is close, but its cap is a lot heavier. Now let's look at them unposted. And here they are unposted. These are all number six size steel nibs, with the exception of the Pelican, which is a number six size 18 karat gold nib. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Leonardo Momento Magico. And it has a number six size steel Yovo nib. Let's check the wetness. This nib is plenty wet and it's smooth like glass. And Leonardo Yovo nibs can vary. Here is my Leonardo Momento Prunia and it has the same medium Yovo nib. They are identical except that the prunia that's how you spell it has a good deal of feedback maybe you can hear this so it's pencil like it's not a bad thing it's a good thing now listen to this one you should hear the difference there this one is like glass Whereas this one is more like a pencil. And of course I like both. I like the writing in every pen to be slightly different. It gives them some personality. And the ink today is of course Leonardo Turquesi. I'm going to put that there while I write it so I spell it correctly. T U R C H E S E Turquesi Hawaii. And here are some swatches I did on Tomoe River paper showing some similar turquoise inks that I have. At the bottom here is the is the Leonardo Turquoise Hawaii. And it has a, it's a pale blue, uh, blue green, whereas the Leonardo Smeraldo Emerald is a lot greener. And there's Lamy Turquoise, which is a close match to the Lamy Turquoise, but the closest match that I own to Leonardo Turquoise is back here is Robert Oster's Bondi Blue. I find that that color matches the Leonardo Turquoise Hawaii very, very closely. The reason I do all that is that the inkswatch.com doesn't have these Leonardo inks as of yet. It looks like I might have to swatch and upload to them. And as to line variation, well, it is a steel nib. 
you can push a little bit out of the nib but it's not flexible it's fairly stiff it has just a bit of bounce to it this nib makes a 0 0.6 millimeter line which is a Western medium or a Japanese medium to broad on my Richard Binder chart and for our quote and some reverse writing. It's very scratchy and very dry. And some quick writing. no issues whatsoever very very wet nib so what do i like and what do i not like about this fountain pen my criticisms of this fountain pen should be taken in perspective this is an incredibly beautiful expertly designed and engineered fountain pen in my opinion leonardo is making some of the best fountain pens in the world right now and the owner and lead designer salvatore matrone is not resting on his laurels either he continues to redesign, refine his existing models, and create new models all the time. I've just heard that Leonardo will begin making their own nibs in-house in Naples. I'm a little disappointed in my Leonardo Momento Magico, mostly because of my own expectations and personal preferences. I was hoping the Magico would be a Momento Zero with a piston. It's not. It's a different pen in the hand than the Momento Zero. That's not a bad thing, it's a different thing. If you like the standard type grip section, like this barrel with the flare, then this pen will be good for you. As I said, I think I'm a little bit spoiled by this two-step design on the Momento Zero and on the Ferrari sections. These pens are just so exquisitely, ergonomically perfect for my hand that nice though the Magico is, it just doesn't do it for me like this original. But the nib is incredibly smooth on this Magico. The Smeraldo acrylic is just stunning. The ink capacity is more than generous at 1.5 milliliters, and the ink window is large and clear and unobtrusive when the pen is capped. It's also incredibly reasonably priced, just a few dollars more than a Memento Zero and comes in some seriously beautiful finishes. There is also this new galaxy-like blue acrylic called Blue Abyss that calls to me like a siren across the Tyrrhenian Sea. Buy me, buy me. But at $580 US, its calls will go unheeded as I console myself with my Leonardo Momento Zero Grande Jonathan Brooks Earth Magic 2. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And please look in the description for a link to Goldspot Pens, as I'm now an affiliate of the online store. And when you shop at Goldspot using my link, you'll be supporting my channel as well at no extra charge to you. You can also join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month, and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.